Section 4. Balance of Payments The balance of payments is a double-entry bookkeeping system that summarizes a country's economic transactions with the rest of the world for a particular period of time. Analyzing the balance of payments is an important element in assessing a country's macroeconomic environment, its monetary and fiscal policies, and its long-term growth potential. Investors use data on trade and capital flows to evaluate a country's overall level of capital investment, profitability, and risk. A very loose analogy would be that you study the financial statements and accounts of a company to evaluate how the company is doing. Similarly, you evaluate the accounts of a country to determine how the country is doing. Section 4 has four subsections and we will go over them. The curriculum provides a lot of detail and I will try to focus on the items that I think are most testable. Section 4.1 identifies the major balance of payment accounts and those accounts are shown over here. The curriculum talks about debits and credits, but I don't think you need to go into the details of debits and credits because if this material has not been emphasized in FRA, then I cannot imagine how the CFA Institute will give you a question related to debits and credits in economics. Nevertheless, just to understand the basic bookkeeping or the basic accounting, let's consider an example. Say a country such as the United States imports cars from Germany. So we are taking a United States perspective. The transaction is that the, com the, transaction is that the United States, which is a country, imports goods from another country, let's say Germany, and agrees to pay later. What is our accounting entry? When cars are imported, we have an increase in this asset. So there are cars in this country, the value of imported goods goes up. At the same time, the United States is saying that it will pay later. So there is an increase in debt that is owed to foreigners. So this account will also go up. Notice that there is an increase in an asset here and an increase in a liability. The curriculum gives more examples, but I think my simple example will help you understand what we are talking about. The key here is to recognize the fact that this is straightforward double entry accounting. Section 4.2 Balance of Payment Components BOP has three components, the current account, financial account and capital account. And then each of these major components have sub-accounts. The current account deals with the flow of goods and services. The financial account deals with investment flows. And the capital account deals with capital transfers. That is a high-level description. Now let's look at the sub-accounts under each of these major components. Under current account, we have these four sub-accounts. Merchandise trade refers to the goods that are traded. This could be the import of goods or the export of goods. Similarly, the import or export of services also comes under the current account. Given the sorts of questions that I have seen in the curriculum, I would want you to read the description of services in the curriculum and I'll also read this out for you. Services include tourism, transportation, engineering and business services such as legal services, management consulting and accounting, fees from patents and copyrights on new technology, software, books and movies are also recorded in the services category. So if you get a question that talks about the fees related to a patent or fees related to a software service, then that is recorded under the current account. Income receipts refers to the receipts that we get on our investments abroad. 
So if we are taking the perspective of country A, and this country has invested in other parts of the world, a coupon payment comes back from that investment or a dividend payment comes back. That income is called a income receipt and it is categorized in the current account. Unilateral transfer of assets refers to a one-way transfer of assets into the country where nothing is expected in return. A classic example is remittances which are transferred from other countries to this particular country. Typically the remittances come from overseas nationals and since nothing is expected in return, remittances fall under current account and that's why it is called unilateral because money comes in or assets come in and nothing is given in return. The financial account has two subcategories financial assets abroad and foreign owned financial assets in the domestic country. This is also sometimes called the reporting country. Here again, I would encourage you to read the few lines in the curriculum related to each of these items. With regards to financial assets abroad, here's what the curriculum says. A country's assets abroad are further divided into official reserve assets, government assets and private assets. These assets include gold, foreign currencies, foreign securities and the government's reserve position in the IMF. This could also include direct foreign investment and claims reported by resident banks. So that is financial assets abroad. The second subcategory is foreign owned assets in the domestic country. If this is the domestic country or the reporting country, then the financial assets owned by foreigners in this country is what we talk about over here. And this is what the curriculum says. Foreign owned assets in the reporting country are further divided into official reserves and other foreign assets. These assets include securities issued by the reporting country's government and private sectors. In other words, securities issued by the government such as T-bills and bonds that might be issued by the corporate sector. Also included here would be direct investments and foreign liabilities reported by the reporting country's banking sector. And finally we come to the capital account which again has two sub accounts. The major one is capital transfers. This would include debt forgiveness. It would also include the transfer of funds linked to the sale or acquisition of fixed assets, gift and inheritance taxes, death duties, uninsured damage to fixed assets and legacies. And finally, sales and purchases of non-produced non-financial assets. This would include rights to natural resources and the sale and purchase of intangible assets such as patents, copyrights, trademarks, franchises and leases. This is an excerpt from example 10 in the curriculum which shows the US current account balance. You don't need to know this but it is a simple illustration where we have the current account and notice that all the sub accounts that we talked about are shown over here. Then we have the capital account and the financial account with the sub accounts that we talked about. Section 4.3 deals with paired transactions in the BOP bookkeeping system. I don't think this material is overly testable. What is more likely is the sorts of questions that I will show you on the next slide. But I'll still cover this very briefly and if you are really interested and have time then you can go over this section in the curriculum. Let's take a look at the first transaction 
A company in Germany sells technology equipment to a South Korean auto manufacturer for a total price of 50 million and this includes freight of 1 million. The payment will be made in 90 days and the merchandise will be shipped via a German cargo ship. Now let's take a German perspective and what are the entries that will be made. This is an export of goods and services. So we have export of goods worth 49 and exports of services worth 1. And this will be shown in the current account. Both the 49 and the 1 will show up in the current account. The 49 will go under goods and 1 will go under services. At the same time, the money owed by foreigners to Germany is going up and that will be reflected in the financial account. The next transaction. A German utility company imports gas from Russia valued at 45 million and agrees to pay the Russian company within three months. So what is happening here? Again, this is an import of a good. So that will be shown in the current account and the amount that will be shown is 45. And at the same time, Germany needs to pay the foreign company. So the foreign company's claim is going up by 45 million. That will be reflected in the financial account. And finally, a German commercial bank purchases 100 million in intermediate term bonds issued by a Ukrainian steel company. The bonds are denominated in euros, so payment is made in euros. Again, we are taking a German perspective. This is a foreign asset abroad and will show up in the financial account. Also, in the double entry system, we will reflect the fact that there is 100 million worth of a foreign private short term claim. But the key point to understand here is that this is a German investment in a foreign country. So that shows up in the financial account component. Now, what are the sorts of questions that you might get? The first high level, and this perhaps is overly simplistic, but you need to recognize the three components, current account, financial account, and capital account. And then here is what you are more likely to be tested on, where you would be given a particular country, and you will be asked where transactions such as this might be recorded. So if Turkey sells gas exploration rights to a Russian company, where is this shown? And remember, gas exploration rights, this was recorded in the capital account. Software related patents and services to a Canadian company. If you recall, we talked about software services in the services category, which falls under the current account. If Turkey borrows 100 million euro from a German bank, this would show up in the financial account. If a Turkish company receives 5 million dividend from an equity investment in another country, then that is income on an investment made abroad and this shows up in the current account. There are a few questions like this in the practice problems. So make sure you do those questions also practice from other sources. But the key point is that you need to understand what transactions show up in which of these three major categories. Section 4.4 .4 deals with national and economic accounts and the balance of payments. Here again, the curriculum gives a lot of detail, but I believe that this is the basic relationship that you need to understand. The current account 
and this is the overall current account after considering all the imports and exports and the other sub components but generally imports and exports are the major components so the current account is given by the private savings government savings and then we subtract investments in a given country if private savings are high government savings are high and investments are low then we will have a large current account surplus on the other hand if these numbers are low and investments are high then we will have a current account deficit once you have this etched in your brain the sorts of questions that might show up will be easy to solve for example what is the impact on the current account of each of the following if there is high consumption in a given country that means that savings are low if savings are low that means that there will be a downward effect on the current account so this will lead towards a deficit if there is high government spending that means that the government is running a deficit which is the opposite of savings and again that would mean that the current account would come down or potentially there is a deficit and similarly high investments also would mean that current account comes down you can imagine a question where the terminology or the phrase or the direction is changed a little bit and you will be asked about the impact on the current account if you have time read examples 11 and 12